I had someone send me a message saying that their wife is accusing him of being psychotic because he has Asperger's and I wanted to address some things with this. First I'm gonna quote a little bit that she felt like Asperger's was a psychotic condition, try to manipulate that, that they can't feel emotions, um, and that he wouldn't be capable of being a father to his daughter. This is a person in real life we're talking about here. And he wanted me to be able to have a positive opinion on Asperger's and be able to say a little more about it. So what I've done is I've thought about this a lot and I've taken a couple of portions from a book and I've condensed it down and trimmed it down to have the important parts. This is not exactly how it reads in the book. It, it actually is, you know, longer and better, but I needed to just show the parts that kind of related to what we're talking about. So I took some sentences out and stuff, but anyway, um, this is House Rules, Jody Picoult. Um, there's a couple of excellent descriptions about Asperger's and what people don't understand about it, and I found this to be really important. So I put this together, I'm reading this off of paper, but as I typed it up. Tell us a little about Asperger's, I say. Well, the syndrome was discovered in Dr. by Dr. Hans Asperger in 1944, but it wasn't shown in the English-speaking world until the late 1980s, and it wasn't classified as a psychiatric disorder until 1994. Technically, it's a neurobiological disorder that affects several areas of development. Unlike some other children on the autism spectrum, children with Asperger's are very bright and verbal and crave social acceptance. They just don't know how to get it. Their conversations might be one-sided. They might be focused on a very narrow topic of interest. They might use repetitive language or a monotone voice. They won't be able to read social cues or body language and therefore can't identify the feelings of people around them. Because of this, someone with Asperger's is often considered to be odd or eccentric, which leads to social isolation. Well, doctor, there are a lot of folks in the world who are odd and eccentric and haven't been diagnosed with Asperger's, right? Of course. So how do you diagnose it? It's theory of mind. The child who chooses privacy versus the child who can't connect but wants to, desperately, and cannot put himself in the shoes of another child to better understand how to facilitate that. Asperger's is a developmental disability, but it's a hidden one. Unlike, for example, a mentally challenged individual, a child with Asperger's might look normal and even sound fairly normal and appear incredibly intelligent, excuse me, incredibly competent, yet he will have crippling difficulties with communication and social interaction. Okay, so that was a doctor's description in the book, and I've done my best to take things out, not to have spoilers from the book or, or like plot things, you know, revealed. Take took those sentences out, but that was like a doctor's diagnosis, like a smart one. And here's a little bit of one from this kid that's lesser functioning on the autism spectrum than some of us. You know, I'm they higher functioning, and so are a lot of people. But this is like a lower functioning person that's like. I don't remember how old he is in the book, 16, 17, 18, and, but this is a fictional book, but with really good information in it. But, um, anyway, this is his mother's description of him. Jacob's been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. It's a high-functioning autism. How does Asperger's affect Jacob's behavior? We hardly, he hardly shows, ever shows emotion, either happy or sad, and he can't relate to the conversations of kids his own age. He takes words very, very literally. If you ask him to eat with his mouth closed, for example, he'd tell you that's impossible. He doesn't like being the center of attention. When things are really overwhelming, he'll go somewhere to hide, his closet or under his bed, and he'll stop speaking. Okay, so your son is moody, literal, and wants to do things his way and on his own timetable. That sounds very much like a teenager. Emma shakes her head. I'm not explaining this well. It's more than just being literal or wanting a routine. An ordinary teenager decides not to interact. For Jacob, it's not a choice. Um, when people are lower functioning with autism, um, you know, they their social awkwardness is so clumsy and so poor and so bad that they can become numb to social interaction at all. They start to not want it and not care because it just gets screwed up and people make fun of them and stuff. But anyway, I kind of wanted to address some of that and the, the monotone and the lack of emotions and stuff with Jacob's character and just address kind of how that, how that can be better defined because we're certainly not psychotic, but I can see why someone might think that it's, it's one of those things I wish people would have more understanding about. If I can share a little about myself, uh, I actually was once 
I had to leave a school because of a horror story I wrote, and I kind of fit the description of someone that might cause trouble. I didn't smile, I didn't really talk, I didn't really make eye contact. I'm sure I looked like a really suspicious person that was up to no good, but I wasn't going to hurt anyone. I mean, I was making a creative writing story basically just because my friend was pressuring me to, and I mean, it just sort of kept going. I didn't even really want to do it. It was like my friend got me to do it. and. <laughs> But I was the one that had to leave the school, and it was his mom that came to the principal with trembling hands saying, Get this kid kicked out of school or I'm going to have you fired. And this is, you know, not too long after Columbine. And, you know, people have misunderstandings about how we, we don't have emotion. And I, there may be people with autism that can't put themselves in another person's shoes enough to be able to care about somebody else's feelings but I know for me I actually do care about other people's feelings a lot and I have mild autism I may not always be able to show that very well I don't always know exactly how to explain something but I can assure you that I feel very very bad when I've hurt someone sometimes for far longer than I should like obsessively because I really really care about other people and their emotions I don't always know how to explain it I don't always know the right words to talk about it and especially around other guys we don't really like to talk about feelings anyway and I don't wouldn't do it and just make somebody uncomfortable so it's not that we're psychotic and we don't have feelings but sometimes we don't have the words to explain it and people that know someone that's you know on the autism spectrum that's not so high functioning there's kids that are like four or six or eight before they can say one word. I mean, being able to talk but, but clumsily is better than not even being able to say anything. And some people are so bad off that they, they can't talk until like a really late age because they have such a hard time talking, communicating because of their autism and them being farther along on the spectrum than we are. So if we can talk, you know, I mean, that's a good thing. <laughs> we might be a little clumsy about it, but at least we're trying and we're trying to learn from our errors a little bit. I mean, I'm learning every day and I'm becoming more and more functioning in the world every day, but it's been a long road and I wasn't always as good at communicating as I am now. I said the wrong stuff like so many times when I'd say one thing and mean another thing, but I mean, far from being psychotic, I hope this can give some good information and, and help people think about it a little bit differently. Someone having Asperger's does not mean that they would be a bad father. That is definitely far from the truth. Anyway. Hope that helps. Thanks.